rules but they have the conservation commission meeting on the agenda for november 14 2020 first on the agenda is the request for determination of applicability six nashua road blackman palmer seeks to remove several trees leading towards a single family home the trees are located in a 35 foot no disturbed zone Hello, it's Kishore Parmar, uh, Laxman's son. Um, I'm dialing in right now. Um, there's roughly, well, there is four trees that we want to take down um, that are kind of leading towards the house. Um, we did send out a map. I emailed it over. Um, so we're just, they are in a wetland area and within the 100 foot buffer. So before we cut them down, we wanted to get permission. Uh, once cut down, we'll probably replant either if, uh, small tree either a service berry or a willow in that regards most likely a service service berry tree um a list was sent to me the allowable trees in that area so we're just asking for a determination regarding that are the trees currently dead or um they some of them look dead they're very bare they're kind of like you know they're in the in the marshland swamp land so they're not the healthiest looking trees that they are but they're not completely dead no we need to look at that sure do you have any photos that you can share i have photos from my site visit but maybe it's better if you have photos of the specific trees that you're planning to remove i don't i don't have them on there i think there was a miscommunication between my dad and i regarding i, I thought he had given them or marked them when you or uh showed them when you came for the site visit i can show those or i can get those tomorrow um to take a look at it or mark them specifically on site okay um i can pull up the photos that i took and maybe you can point out the trees that you're planning to remove if that works for the commission yep i think i'll have to join this one I'm not seeing anything on my end. Okay, hold on. Okay. So this is the general area. I think this is where the wetland is. Correct. I think that's the kind of where the driveway is, I know I sent a map. Uh, that's the kind of southeast corner. So that tree closest to the right, right there, that's kind of getting choked out by the vines. That's one of them that's kind of large that's leaning towards a house. That's another one right there. Yeah, that one right, those two right there, or one. So it's this one? Can you see? You can yeah, see that. that's that's one of them. I know he had marked is three. Is the one that's leaning another one? Yes. Uh, there's none there that I could see. That's a Yeah, that's one right there too. If you look at the top height of it. And I think that's the same one from the picture before. So those are the two. Um, I could confirm what the third one is. Um, it might be just in the, in kind of the bunch of the other ones. So. So the board, what do you want to go out to take a site visit or probably want to look at it? Take a look at it. Yeah. Just from the picture, they look like they're pretty choked out. I don't think it's, Anything that's too viable, probably, but well, yeah, it could be the vines could be cut down too, right? Yeah, 
I mean, that's what's going to kill us. Yeah. Right. No matter what you put there. <laughs> so, what's the uh, what's your schedule like the next day to get the line to? We got some decent day, couple days coming up. Any time after two in the afternoon. Anytime. Yeah, after two. After two. Yeah. You want to go tomorrow after two? That's fine. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So, right. what time do you want to meet? Yeah, everyone knows where the site is. Nash, six natural, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We can meet there. Two fifteen. Two. I'll be. I'll be out of half field by two seventeen. You, you're, you're, you're available tomorrow, right? So, well, I'll say two thirty. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna arrange to come out two thirty tomorrow. And take a look at it. For sure. Tomorrow yeah. or which day? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, two thirty. I'll let, I'll let him know if I'm not around. He should be around. Is there? You want to go a different time or? No, that's fine. Between him and I, we'll figure it out. It's just the four trees? Yes. Okay. If you can, if you're not going to be there, if you can mark them with some uh, flagging paper, paint flagging paper, paper, something around the tree trunks. Yeah, I'll I'll do, I'll I'll do that in that. I should be back at two thirty, but I'll have them mark it or I'll mark it with him. Yeah, I think it'd be better if we all go out there as a board and look at it real quick. Then we can uh, take it up at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, no problem. All right. So we're going to continue this hearing. Mm -hmm. so do we need a motion for this? Technically? Yeah. I'm going to need a motion to continue this hearing until December 12th. I make a motion to continue okay. this meeting for, uh, what is it, 6 New Haven? Nashua. Yeah. 6 Nashua. Nashua. Nashua Road till. Uh, motion till made by Ray. I'll second it. Ray and second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All four of us Okay. We'll put it on first on the agenda for December 12th. December 12th. Uh, All right. You got a couple other things, Kayla, that aren't on this agenda. Do we want? To... All right. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank hey, you. Sir. Thank you. Um, yes, that's on the. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so that was... okay. I have an old agenda. Oh, this is this is my own personal notes. Okay. Yeah. So other business changes to one seventy dash two ninety two mass CEP file. File number 170-292, Hopkins Academy Athletic Fields. So you're on. Hello. Um, hi, my name is Doug Searle. I work with Berkshire Design Group. Uh, with my colleague here, Greg Hansen, uh, uh, also with Berkshire Design Group. Uh, we have been working with uh, Hopkins Academy to help them in their phase two of uh, the athletic fields improvements. Um, and uh, so I'm a landscape designer with the firm. Uh, Greg has been, uh, he's a senior civil engineer with the firm, so uh, I'm going to introduce what's going on here and then let Greg uh, kind of fill in on the, describe some of the technical stuff because he's the one that does all the hydrocat and stormwater calculations and things. Uh, the uh, gestalt of the situation, uh, this was the uh, uh, plan that, uh, very similar to what was approved, there have been some various revisions. It's the project's currently under construction. Um, none of the revisions have been anything that triggers uh, further review until uh, the issue that uh, we're here tonight uh, to discuss. Um, and uh, the issue is that uh, here down, this is the north side. So really the site is like this. So this is the north um, west corner of the site. Uh, school is located here. Existing parking lot is, is here. Um, in this location, uh, the uh, area uh, just to back up here, the, just for a uh, frame of reference, uh, phase one included putting in the, these new baseball and softball fields um, and a soccer field in the middle here. Phase two was uh, redoing the softball field and uh, varsity baseball field uh, with two soccer fields. And also the school had requested that we improve uh, the uh, JV baseball field here because the drainage is so poor. Uh, so we had added... Uh, thing is sinking, uh, drainage structures um, uh, and irrigation lines uh, throughout the site uh, to uh, drain the field more effectively. And uh, in this uh, northeast corner, uh, the way that the walkway works, the grading kind of created a sort of a pond in the landscape. Um, uh, a low point wasn't a pond yet, but we were worried that it would be. And um, infiltration uh, treatment chambers were added and a storm scepter, uh, stormwater uh, uh, treatment chamber uh, that separates total suspended solids from uh, surface runoff that would be entering from the surface. This is essentially the 
the uh, uh, one of the few uh, areas uh, along uh, this main uh, drain line that uh, leaves through the site here. Uh, essentially, this is a high point of the site, and uh, this existing underground uh, drain line drains all the way out and then into this uh, agricultural uh, drainage ditch uh, that exists uh, on the east of the site. Um, and uh, when the contractor went to install this unit, this is essentially a very deep 10 and a half foot uh, deep concrete cylinder, uh, they were running into issues of very high groundwater. Now we know given that this is all in the floodplain, that uh, groundwater was shallow. We had a very exceptional year for rain uh, this summer. And so they were basically discovering kind of a unique situation of multiple levels of of groundwater due to kind of clay pans in the soil as they got through the first clay pan and groundwater was seeping in. And then they punctured through this, through, through a deeper clay pan. And they tried a number of different techniques to essentially to, to dewater this hole because uh, they can't install anything with water in the hole. And they did this for several days and they got to a point where they said, this is well above and beyond like our, our contractual scope and fee of what, you know, of what we're willing to do. Uh, they proposed a, uh, you know, a, a particularly intensive dewatering scheme, and the school said this is kind of getting outside of the budget that we have for this overall project. So, you know, Berkshire, is there any, is there is there anything alternative that we can do? And uh, so uh, Greg went to the drawing board and essentially said we can uh, exchange this chamber for a uh, for a drainage uh, swale, vegetated drainage swale that will remove sediment. Uh, uh, from it and meet the same uh, state water standards. Um, and so I'm just going to flip through that real briefly. And then I want to pass it over to Greg to kind of explain the, the change of the system. So this was the existing detail also that was originally approved uh, with a uh, uh, storm scepter uh, treatment chamber. And then that went through a series of infiltration chambers and then exited through a uh, solid pipe. Uh, to uh, connect with the existing drainage structure. So this was underway of the in installation of these treatment chambers. The far side of this is where they were attempting to do this. So this is back in uh, early October. And essentially roughly four to five feet down, they were running into this groundwater that they could not, they couldn't suck it out fast enough for, for the volume that was filling back into the hole a week later. It was uh, really just the same. And so, uh, just wanted to kind of have pictures to show you uh, what uh, this was looking like. The goal was to go down 10 and a half feet and they were having a kind of an impossible time getting the water to, to drain out fast enough to do that. Um, so what uh, was submitted uh, for your review was uh, this sheet with essentially a, a change here to uh, put in a water quality swale, uh, the detail of which is, is here, um, this rather, Essentially, it's uh, it's elegantly simple. Uh, it's, uh, it's essentially it's a, a, a gravel uh, wrapped with um, uh, filter fabric uh, to uh, uh, keep sediment out uh, with a uh, perforated drain line uh, down at the bottom of this cavity, which is only several feet deep. Um, it's about two and a half feet uh, deep compared to ten and a half feet deep. Um, so it works with uh, shallow groundwater. Uh, and then it works for just creating a, a, a low point uh, for drainage to, uh, you know, direct water to this area for it to seep down and then enter into the infiltration chambers. Um, and so would you like to wow. add to, uh, uh, and then uh, Greg had done some revisions onto these uh, charts here, uh, which were showing these calculations. So I just wanted to see if you want to do that. Describe the engineering speak of this uh, change. So originally, as Doug said, with the uh, stormwater treatment chamber, uh, we have we have to show by calculation that we can remove at least eighty percent of the TSS. And the uh, stormwater treatment chambers, uh, they, they have a program that we run through, and it showed taking ninety nine percent of the TSS out, which we don't normally take, and and we conservatively said that it would take eighty percent out. See, so I put a note up here that the, the program that, that they had us use should, based on the area that this is, that, that small little area that, that got to that uh, stormwater treatment chamber, 
and the amount of impervious area showed that it will take uh, 99% out. So um, we only need to show 80, so I showed 80. But as Doug said, we could not put that stormwater treatment chamber in because of the groundwater. So my redesign was that um, it's basically the neighbor's drainage uh, towards towards uh, Route 9 there that's coming down into that area. So um, there's, there's more than 50 feet of grass. And one of the stormwater standards says if you have more than 50 feet of grass, it's called a vegetated filter strip. You can take a certain percentage of uh, the TSS removal, which is 45%. Okay, and once it does that, then it's going into um, the swale that, that Doug showed you, that little V thing is, is a water quality swale, and that will remove another 70%. So we're getting a total removal of 84% TSS before it gets into that, or this falls over, <laughs> before it gets into that, um, French drain. The French drain is what it was that structure he showed with a stone, the, the perforated pipe down, stone surrounding it, surrounded by filter fabric. The, the water's going to leach down into that. And before it gets to that, it will have removed 84% of the TSS before it gets into the infiltration chambers, the yellow things that, that he showed you on the picture. And uh, we'll infiltrate there as much as possible with high groundwater. You know, it, it, it it, it will infiltrate somewhat uh, in, in low groundwater conditions, but it's been designed to detain enough to mitigate the pre versus post development flows off site down to that uh, that agricultural drainage swale that, that Doug showed you in the beginning. And that, that's basically what the, the change was. Um, we, sh we showed that, that it does work and, um, you know, got around a, a situation to where, you know, we couldn't put the other structure in. Okay. So, you got any questions? So you're getting the 80, <clears throat> what would you say, 84%? It, you're getting the 84% before it hits the pipe? Yes. Yes, based on based on, on the BMPs in the stormwater handbook. Mm -hmm. The vegetated filter strip, you get 45% credit. Yeah. And then, um, that's, that's pre-treatment for the water quality swale, which itself is 70%. So 70% of 45, it goes down through the math and, and gets to 84%. And that's not gonna plug up over time? The swale? That filter yeah. fabric, no, after a while. No, there's ultimately very little source of where sediment would be coming from in the first place. It's all grass. For, for this area, because it's all it's all mowed lawn. It's all grass. Yeah. So you got down the field through the grass. Right? The right. field. Right. Well, the field, yeah, the field is essentially a uh, down gradient of this. And on the other side, there's a walking loop that currently goes uh, halfway around the site. And right. this phase two is extending that. So there's now a circular walking loop that goes around the site. Because of that loop, this little corner is essentially sort of this this uniquely low point, this little oh, pocket. Okay. So I was just looking at the contours. Yes, like, yes. It looks exactly. like you're like three feet higher. It, it's at low the field. now, and it, and it will remain low once, once that yep. sidewalk is put in. Yeah, you go 124, you're down to 121. Right. right. Yeah, so, there's, so there's, it slopes that's down that's from the that's school that's down into that area. Look at the gym, and then it drops down like it's, 10 or 12. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And then there was no way of getting it into the other system in, in, right, in right. the athletic fields with that sidewalk. With the sidewalk. Right. Right. And the essentially, as, by, as far as uh, I've understood this, uh, installing a, a storm scepter or a barracuda, these treatment chambers, uh, these constructed um, uh, pieces of infrastructure uh, are essentially like the um, you know first choice of a BMP. Both that that meets the stormwater standards. So so that's why that was chosen initially in the design. And this is a this is a secondary method that is sort of like number two on the BMP scale and but also meets all of the uh, stormwater standards and so it, it's just as effective uh, but it wasn't what we had uh, initially proposed so uh, they haven't done right now this this part of the project is just sort of sitting there the the hole has been filled in for safety sake we, we watched right. kids come out for recess one of our site meetings and like you'd expect, like immediately a frisbee went over the construction fence and into the hole, and kids ran to the fence, and we we're like, "Oh dear God, okay, let's yeah. let's get this filled." So it's at least temporarily filled in, and uh, so they'll go back and and excavate to do uh, you know what they're allowed to do, and that's why we want to come here tonight to just run this alternative scenario by just to make sure you guys were uh, kept in the loop on this. 
So that's essentially the purpose of tonight's uh, you know meeting is to just show you this alternative and make sure you guys are okay with it. That's Warfield. I would say that that <laughs> second route was probably less impactful than the first one. And if you're digging a ten foot hole and setting a whole chamber like that, it's probably fairly a lot more simpler. A lot less disruptive to it. As far as the people of the division, do you have to do anything different? Well, it's good. You, you can either require an amended order of conditions or you can accept the change without doing an amended order. I'm fine with it. I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Not a great one. Yeah. I'll, I'll look for a motion just to accept the changes that yeah. it and and, and, uh, and motion to that. Make a motion that we accept right, the changes. Right. Make the motion to accept it. Second. Right. Second. Right. Any further discussion? I think we've all yeah, agreed. That's good. Oh, all makes sense. All in favor? All right. All right. Great. Thanks, Thanks all. Appreciate yeah. it very much. Oh, so good. 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 Let good. folks know. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, so we're looking to do over at uh, 243 Russell Street. Is um, We're looking to be able to add some bulk material bins in there. Um, the material that would be stored is all natural products, so uh, undyed wood chips, um, specifically like a, like an aged hemlock wood chip blend that uh, that we that we use at our, our clients' properties. And then um, the other material that we would like to store there is um, is a crushed aggregate. So that would be either like a three eight stone or a three quarter stone that we we use as base for our for our patios. Um, and then on top of that. We would also like to be able to store um, some compost that that's made off site at, at another facility that would come in from one of our suppliers. And um, that would be mixed with loam or maybe just straight loam. But the, um, everything that we would be looking to store would be natural products. And they would be um, essentially encased by um, by using um, concrete blocks. So we would uh, it'd be stacked, stacked concrete bin blocks. And um, so there wouldn't be any fit footing or anything would be a non-permanent structure and um we'd like to put that towards the the rear end of our property and um the reason why we want to do that is just because it will be able to to boost my cruise efficiencies and um it will just make um make some things a little bit more simpler and easier for me to to have things on hand um so what i would uh like to ask the um the the commissioner the board um what are your thoughts on um on storing these type of products and then also, is there any considerations that you'd like to like me to, to take into consideration? The planning board did ask about uh, potentially doing some sort of catch basin system there. Um, one question that I had with a catch basin was um, we have a fairly level property, so we, we wouldn't have anywhere to drain it to. It would be something that would then have to seep into the ground um, within that area, so we just have to have a large reservoir. My neighbor does have a catch basin that, but though that catch basin does drain into the wetlands uh, neighboring on the neighboring property, so I don't know um, what the what the view of the commission is on that. And um, I also wanted to know um, what the um, what your thoughts would be on um, on allowing the uh, or if there's alternative options to, to having to do a, uh, like a catch basin system or, or a way to be able to, um, to limit runoff or if they're, or um, manipulate current runoff on the property. You're going to have to hire someone. You've got to hire, we can't tell you what to do here. You're going to have to hire someone to come up with a plan to take care of your drainage. And you can't, yep. you can't use the existing catch basin of your neighbor. That's his existing system. Yep. And if you do, you know, any drainage, you're gonna have to keep, take care of on site, and that's basically a planning board issue. We're, yep. we, we, deal with, we deal with wetlands. Well, I think this property is partly in the buffer zone. So. Okay. Oh yeah. So we're we're I so from GIS mapping, we're we're over a hundred feet outside of the the wetland zone. But though I don't know if that's we need somebody to come out there to to take a, a look for us and really determine are we are we within that 100 foot buffer zone or is that something that's uh are we, are we outside somebody, of that or are we in the jurisdiction you have to hire someone to determine that for you okay because, is there know, any companies that you guys recommend in the area we can't really recommend no. people right. that's not our that's yeah. that's yeah. we're steering people that we can't we can't legally do that you'll have to um well, reach out to berkshire design group or some other uh, engineering firm uh, uh i'm trying to think of no you're almost there. Um, Chuck Turkowski, not Turkowski. Uh, okay. I have to yeah. look for a wetland Chuck, delineator for that. Chuck doesn't do it anymore. Oh, no. yes, no. He, he moved out. He did my work before, but uh, we've got the first year to do that. Mickey, Mickey Marcus, that's it. New England Environmental. Yeah. Right. You're, you're going to have to research on your own and, and find some. Engineering firm to take to tackle that because you're going to need somebody to, to do calc trades calculations. It's going to, the planning board is going to require that. Mm -hmm. You're going to make a lot of this, a lot of the area impervious if you're going to be putting these these bins in the whole aggregate material. And yep. I walk, I went out there already, and you've really kind of utilized the whole site, including what you're doing to screen loom or dirt or whatever. It's it's a it's a lot of stumps and debris, and it's a shit. Mm -hmm. hole. Um, but you're gonna have to come up with a plan and present that to the planning board. And uh, okay. you, have to, you have to take care of your own drainage on site. You can't you can't run your drainage off site onto someone else's property. 
Oh yeah, no, definitely. That's definitely not part of the plan or it anything almost, like that. It almost it almost seems like you're trying to do too much on that particular parcel for what you're trying to do. Because I don't think it's going to fit well. But that's for you to decide and determine with it with somebody that does engineering for you as far as site plan review and drainage calculations. Okay. Well, well. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate the information. Paul, do you have any comments? No, I, I just wanted to make sure that um, <clears throat> you folks are aware that um, I'm concerned about the runoff of that property coming on to my property at uh, 245 Russell Street, Hadley Park Plaza. Um, uh, concerned because of the wetland. My catch basin is only about 8 to 10 feet off the property line. He has graded on the other side of the fence the property so it all drains onto mine and that's problematic i spoke with uh, jim schaefer at the dep and he said he there should be really a, some kind of sediment control installed in place right now um he's very concerned about the materials that are being stored there right now um they they appear to be uh, could be solid waste um Hadley does not have any permits for solid waste at this time. And for him to be storing those particular types of material, you would need a solid waste permit. So um, he should really probably be in touch with the DEP and maybe uh, go over that with them. And I'm just concerned. I don't, I don't want any uh, pollution to go into my wetland through yeah, this, the drainage system. So that's, um, you know, it feels it sounds like you folks are moving in the right direction. He really needs to have a an engineer come in and design a system like I did with my property. I have storm water system that you know protects the wetland. And if there's any kind of chemical leaks or anything that, that happen on my property, they get caught in a storm storm sector. And uh so we aren't gonna pollute the wetland. And I've just asked that. The same standards be followed through on that property as they have on all the other abutting properties in that neighborhood to keep up it's, the it's, quality uh, of the. It's, uh, it's really a change of use for the property to begin with. So it has to go to the planning board, period. Yep. And he has to come up with appropriate plans to satisfy the drains. And we can't tell him how to do it. But we're, we're aware of the wetlands. So the, if there's any impact on the wetlands or whatever, he's going to address those. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I took a drive out there before and looked at it. And it's, yeah, I did too. Yeah, I, think, I mean, you can see it in the road. I mean, it's just yeah. way too, 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 too. I don't even think it's really appropriate for what he's trying to do there, but that's besides, that's not, that's not my issue. Right, right. I think it's a. Yeah, you look scratchy. I don't know what's going on. I mean, there's, there's places that just packed with stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's right up against oh. the fence, the abutting fence. Yeah. Which is caving. Any silt that's any end of it? No. Silt sock and nothing. There was an issue on that property years ago about putting something up there to store stuff. Remember that? This was, I'm talking 10 years ago, maybe longer. About putting I came over yesterday. So yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. What else we have, Taylor? All, right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Say, any other business from the audience on, on Zoom? Okay. I don't see anybody else. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yep. Good, night. Well. good night. Okay. Um, let's see. Bills? Well, there's one other thing. I sent the UMass Bird file 17293, I think, the culvert replacement. They had sent a dewatering plan, which is a special condition in the Amherst order of conditions, but they sent it to us just for reference. So I sent it in the email. Um, if you wanted to just check it out, if you had any questions that you wanted me to relay to the consultant, I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Bills, um, I'm planning on registering for an MACC course about managing conservation restrictions. And also if anybody else wants to register, I can, have them, I can sign them up. Um, and that's $60 and it will come from our tuition budget. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Great. And then updates, as I mentioned in my email, I am now full-time as the land use coordinator, so I'm also working for planning, ZBA, and CPA. Um, 
but I'm still keeping the same conservation hours. I'm just in the office full time. So if anything, now somebody's there to answer the phone five days a week. Good. Um, Good. Congratulations. Thank you. And if you want to know where I'm up to, I have the job description. <laughs> if you're curious. <laughs> and then upcoming learning opportunities. There's an MFMCP webinar tomorrow afternoon at 12 p.m. about updating wetland bylaws for long-term climate resilience that I'm planning on attending. And I can register anybody else who's interested. How long is the webinar? Um, I think till one or one thirty. Okay, so that's two thirty. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's all the upcoming learning opportunities I have. Uh, minutes. Minutes. I have October minutes. For a motion, accept the October minutes. Yes. Brandon makes a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Steve, second. Any for discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.